Let's bring in Mike Wilson. He's been looking for a 10 to 15 percent correction in the market. Mike, welcome back. It's good to see you. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. Glad you joined us today. Jim Cramer says the S&P is, quote, done getting slammed. Why do you think it's not? Well, look, I think the markets have been going through a bit of a rolling correction really since March, uh, and that fits our narrative that we've been sort of espousing here, which is more about rotations than it is about the index. And, you know, look, when this happens historically, Scott, with, you know, when, when you get these sort of rolling corrections, the market always goes after the weakest length first. And we've seen that sort of in sequential order as we typically do, right? Started with the very expensive, you know, unprofitable companies when rates went up, then it moved into, uh, you know, some of the reopening stocks. Now it's moving into the, the pure cyclical stocks. Um, you know, the growth stocks had their correction last year in the beginning of this year. Um, and so now what's all that's left is the index. And it reminds me a lot of 2018, we kind of had a similar conversation. We were talking about the rolling bear market. We thought it would be more severe then because it was the end of the cycle. This is still, you know, early to mid cycle, but you know, rolling corrections can happen during bull markets, and that's what's going on. So we think it ends with a correction at the index level, and that would be very helpful. That would Then you can kind of reset the playing field. Valuations will be more justifiable, and we can focus back then on earnings growth. But there are plenty of things we think that the market, you know, has been focused on beneath the surface, whether that's decelerating growth, decelerating money supply growth. Um, I'm talking about the Fed having to move the, the, the conversation to when they're going to start tapering with the Delta variant. And then the, the, the one issue that we think we have a little bit of an out of consensus view on is this idea that we overconsumed last year. And there's going to be payback and demand that has to kind of flow through in the estimates for the next two quarters. And then we can kind of reaccelerate from there. Just to be clear, though, you, you think this is a lot more than historical precedent, right? I mean, you think earnings are going to decelerate. In fact, maybe they already are in your estimation. And you think the economy is going to be worse than, than people think. Um, it's a hard case to make, right? I mean, we're, we're coming out of the pandemic. Yes, I understand the Delta variant is, is still out there, but people are still traveling. Listen to the airline CEOs talk over the last 24 hours or so about the pickup in leisure travel. People are out and, and about. And oh, by the way, interest rates are low. Where else are you going to put your money, Mike Wilson? Well, that's a different conversation about putting your money to, you know, there's no place to go. I mean, look, it comes down to risk-reward, risk, re risk reward, Scott. I mean, we're, we tend to be a little bit ahead of the curve. We're willing to step in when things are shaky. And, and then when things are frothy, we, we want to fade certain parts of the market. So getting back to your, your first question, I mean, growth is going to decelerate. It has to. Everybody knows that. You talk about that in the program all the time. The question is, is it going to decelerate more than where expectations are? And we think the answer there is yes. So right now, the, the market is expecting a deceleration. Analysts, strategists are all expecting a deceleration from these unsustainably high levels. That's, that's easy well, to of see. Course. The question is, is it going to decelerate more than people are expecting? And we think there are definitely pockets where that's going to happen. And oh, but more importantly, the stock market is telling you that, right? These early cycle groups, whether it's home builders, some of the retailing, uh, even semiconductors, we think are starting to underperform as early cycle groups are telling you that it could be a little bit more significant than what people are expecting. What, what do you think the message in, in falling rates has been? Is it trying to forecast this slowdown that you see coming in the economy? The, the flip side, the counter, is it's all about the liquidity. Nothing more. Stop reading more into it than really the story makes. You know, we think it's a little bit of both. I mean, obviously, we uh, we saw rates move pretty sharply at the beginning of the year. That was our view in January, that rates would surprise on the upside. It did. But then it overshot, right? We had some technical features that took rates probably up a little bit too fast and too furious at the end of March. And then we seen a reset. We actually expected rates to come in. But now they've gotten to a level that we think it is signaling perhaps a bit of more of a slowdown than what people are anticipating or were anticipating, say, a month or two ago. I think Delta is a big part of that. When I talk to people in the bond community, they seem to be a bit more focused on Delta than folks in the equity community for whatever reason. So I think that's definitely weighing on, on rates. I also think, once again, this uh, idea around uh, the payback and demand. And then, of course, the infrastructure bill has faded a bit in terms of its visibility and whether it's going to get passed or not or how big it's going to be. And that's a big deal for, for the bond market as well.